So one of the issues that we'll, of course, be talking about is the idea of using uh, a prosecutor, using the threat of jail uh, to deal with truancy. Is that the proper thing to do uh, in this country? <laughs> well, there you go. Welcome back, guys. Man, I'm sitting here and I'm scratching my head and trying to figure out why do we still have undecided voters? It's what, 45 days away from the election and we still have people out here undecided. I don't get this. You know, we have the prosecutor who have no business experience. All she do is prosecute folks. You know what I'm saying? Nobody like prosecutors. Nobody likes prosecutor. Her claim of fame has been truancy officer. I would not be standing here were it not for the education I received. And I know many of, many of us will say the same thing. And I believe a child going without an education is tantamount to a crime. So I decided I was going to start prosecuting parents for truancy. Well, this was a little controversial in San Francisco. <laughs> And frankly, my staff went bananas. They were very concerned because we didn't know at the time whether I was going to have an opponent in my reelection race. Back in California, she used to put black women, black mothers in jail if their children miss school. I don't I don't agree what my Kamala Harris did to my mom. And I don't I don't agree with what she's done to other parents as well. My message to all Americans, especially black Americans, do not trust Kamala Harris. A friend of mine actually called me and he said, Kamala, my wife got the letter. She freaked out. She brought all the kids into the living room, held up the letter, said, if you don't go to school, Kamala's going to put you and me in jail. <laughs> yes, we achieved intended effect. But you know now, things have changed. They probably screw up that too. She gonna walk around and say, I never put women in jail. It's true. Kamala Harris never sent parents to jail for their kids' truancy. The polls are looking bad. It's so bad for Kamala that now she's going down to the border. Breaking tonight, the Harris campaign is considering a last-minute trip to the border. On Friday, during her trip to Arizona, she's hoping to change the narrative that she's soft on immigration. A new poll shows that more than half of Americans believe that Trump would be better on the issue. After four years of talking about the border's fine, nothing's wrong with the border, and now she's tanking in the polls, she's going to do a pop-up visit at the border. You can't make this up. Nobody like prosecutors. If you got two lawyers, a defense lawyer and a prosecutor, everybody will prefer the defense lawyer. He's the one to keep you out of jail. The prosecutor is the one that puts your ass in jail. Now, when Kamala was assistant DA, guess what case came across her desk? That could mean life in prison. And cases like this can depend on the testimony of the child accuser. In general, uh, the child will be able to recall and recollect with some detail the incident, and that is persuasive to a jury, even if it is the only testimony that is available. Yeah, no wonder Janet Jackson don't like her. The interesting thing is I've known Michael from many different standpoints, and Michael would spend a lot of time with my kids. I have beautiful kids, and at the time, like at Mar-a-Lago, and even in Trump Tower, the kids were very young. Michael would come, play with the kids. He just loved children. He was not a child molester, and I am certain of that. He loved children. He'd play with my son Eric and my son Donald, and he'd just play with them forever. He loved children, but he was not a child molester. And, you know, that whole final saga of Neverland and the police and what they did was, I think, a very, very, a very, very bad part of Michael. And you see, Donald Trump was defending or was on the side of Michael Jackson. Unlike Kamala, I hope Mr. D.L. Hewley sees this. <laughs> 